I have a question for you. Can Christians, can believers command angels to do their bidding? In the past few decades, there have been a number of people who have taught in the affirmative. Yes, that is a possibility. And of course, it's based on Hebrews chapter 1, verses 13 and 14 that talk about how angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for the heirs of salvation or to the heirs of salvation. There's some controversy over whether or not the original word should be translated to or for. If angels are sent forth to minister for the heirs of salvation, then the implication is then we can direct them what to do. What do you think? It's controversial. This is primarily a teaching directed to the body of Christ and to people that have a biblical worldview. But there the question is again, can we command angels? I contend that if individual believers could command angels, there would be absolute confusion in the angelic world. There would be chaos. Think of it for just a moment. There are over 2 billion professing Christians in the world. What if all of them believed that they could command angels? Every day there would be dozens of commands crisscrossing each other in the spiritual realm, some contradicting each other, some even in conflict with each other. The angels would be grabbing their heads, wondering what direction to go, whether or not to respond. Maybe I better check with the Father and find out if it's all right. Can you imagine what kind of web of uh, interconnecting uh, activities would be going on if that were the case. Certainly, it's an enticing, intriguing, interesting, and entertaining idea that I as a Christian can command an angel to do what I want done. But unfortunately, I can't find any basis for that in the Bible. And let me give you some key examples from reputable and respected leaders in the history of God's dealings with mankind. I guess there's no respected leader from the Old Testament era any greater than Moses. Listen to what Moses said in Numbers chapter 20, verse 16. He spoke of when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord and he heard our cry and sent an angel and brought us out of Egypt. Moses did not say, we commanded in the spirit and the angels did our bidding and crushed the Egyptian empire. Psalm 103 verses 20 and 21 is very helpful in understanding this concept. Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. So in that rendering, the New King James Version of Psalm 103, verses 20 and 21, it says that the angels excel in strength, and they certainly do. One angel will bind Satan at the end of time, one angel crushed the entire Assyrian army and 185,000 soldiers lay dead. So angels do excel in strength, but it said they do God's word. They do his word and heed the voice of his word. Well, I've heard it taught that when we preach the unadulterated word of God, that because it is God's word, it activates activity in the angelic world. That's possible, but still we're not actively engaged in commanding those angels. They are involved in the honoring of God's word and the manifestation of his promises. But I do not believe they would do that without the Father's permission, or more perfectly, without the Father's direction, without God's insight on the matter. They heed the voice of his word, and then verse 21 says, Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. 
And so host means all the armies of angels under the command of the Lord himself. And they do his pleasure. They don't respond to what my pleasure dictates they should do, but they do his pleasure. I can appeal to God. I can cry out to God, just as Moses said, and God can send the angels to do his pleasure as he responds to my cry. He is sovereign in this particular area. Now, the complete Jewish Bible translates those two verses a little differently, but very insightfully. Watch this. Bless Adonai. Adonai is a word that Jewish people use that means Lord, and it's a substitute word for the tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H, which should be rendered Yahweh. But in respect to the name of God, they use the word Adonai. Bless Adonai, you angels of his, you mighty warriors who obey his word, who carry out his orders. Bless Adonai, all his troops who serve him and do what he wants. Wow, that brings up a really important point. See, Jesus is called the Lord of hosts, and that's a title for him that means the God of an army of angels that are poised and ready for battle. Now, there is a certain protocol in every branch of the armed forces that one commanding officer does not tell another commanding officer, soldiers, what to do, or there would be chaos on the battlefield. There's a certain line of command. And Jesus is the Lord of hosts, the God of the army of angels that do his bidding, or according to the complete Jewish Bible, they are mighty warriors who carry out his orders. So maybe just maybe we should appeal to the Lord of hosts and then let him decide what the battle plan should be if we capture his heart with our intercession and our cry. Some more biblical examples. What about Daniel chapter 6, verse 21 and 22? Daniel said to King Darius after he spent the night in the lion's den, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Daniel did not summon the angels. God sent the angel. And it only took one angel, apparently, because Daniel said, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. Another example from the book of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which incidentally are not their Hebrew names, but the names we remember them by. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down to the image that Nebuchadnezzar made. In Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. And God, in his mercy, the Bible says, sent his angel and rescued his servants. Daniel 3, 28. The three Hebrews did not summon the angel of the Lord. God sent the angel. And Nebuchadnezzar was the one that declared that. He said, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him, and they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. So quite possibly, if we are passionate about submitting to the authority of God alone and not bowing down to the idolatrous things the world offers to us that God will respond to us. And if we trust in him, just like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego trusted God, they said, we don't know whether God will deliver us or not. They weren't shaking their fists saying, we're going to call on angels and they'll come and rescue us. They said, we don't know, but we just know we're not going to bow. And the Lord of hosts sent one angel. He didn't have to send an army just one angel to take care of that situation. Then what about the church in Jerusalem? When Peter was put in prison, they began to appeal to God in Peter's behalf. And 
He was delivered because an angel of the Lord came in the prison and, of course, set him free from his shackles and guided him out of the prison and took him down the street. And when he was recounting that in Acts chapter 12, verse 11, he said, Now I know without a doubt the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were anticipating. So once again, this great apostle Peter did not boast that he was in charge of the angel. It was the God he appealed to who sent his angel. Most amazingly, and I need to repeat those two words, most amazingly, even Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of God, did not command the angels during his earthly sojourn that we know of. There is no account where he actually voiced something like that. There is an account where he shares something quite differently, though. In Matthew chapter 26, verses 51 through 53, this is when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Judas has betrayed him and led the soldiers to the spot where he was at. And suddenly one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. But Jesus said, put your sword in its place for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Listen to the next verse now. And do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? Even Jesus did not boast that I can command the angels. He said, I'll pray to my father and he'll send 12 legions of angels. So would we exalt ourselves above the Lord Jesus Christ? I do believe in angelic activity. I believe there have been many times that angels have rescued me. I do believe that angels can be seen at times. I have seen an angel myself in a dream where an angel held a scroll and and uh, a man of God rather held a scroll and an angel wrote on that scroll these words, healing is the expression of God's love. And after the dream was over, we had a tremendous healing move of God in one of our meetings uh, because from way in the distance after the angel wrote that statement, I heard a man of God cry aloud in this dream There are even some who will receive creative power. And the dream was over. And God gave me a certain directive of what I would have to do in order for that promise to be activated, which I obeyed. And I advertised the fact that God has spoken to me that there would be a release of creative power in that certain meeting I was involved in. And a person came in that night with two twisted legs, one twisted around from a birth deformity, the other twisted around from a car wreck and dragged their way to the seat in the back of the church. And I preached on creative miracles because that's the message that the angel brought to me. And angels are messengers that healing is the expression of God's love. And I had thought up. Up until that time, that healing was almost something you had to coerce God into doing by quoting his word and making him feel obligated. I don't think I actually thought of it that way in my mind. But now that I look back, I think I fell into that erroneous kind of idea. And the angel of the Lord was just communicating to me, God heals because he loves. Well, I preached on that. And this woman who had this horrible deformity in her legs dragged her way to the front to be healed. And when I reached out to pray for her, she fell out under the power of God, fell on the church floor, and then a few moments later jumped up and ran around that church building. She contacted me on Facebook just a few months ago and said, I'm still healed. And it's been probably about 30 years since I prayed for her. And I was quite surprised to get a communication. So Yes, angels are very involved in the life of a believer. And I believe there's been very much angel activity in my life. But 
I have never commanded an angel. I will never command an angel, but I will seek the Lord of hosts with all my heart, expecting him to commission his angels to fight in my behalf because he gives his angels charge over me to bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. So I expect angelic activity, but God's in charge. He's the commanding officer. I'm just a soldier in his army. And next time around, we're probably going to be talking about another related subject. Can we communicate with angels? There are some who say we can and even initiate the conversation. We need to focus on that question on the next episode of Revealing the True Light.